Good morning. I'd like to welcome you again to another one of our small group Bible studies. Today we're going to look, uh, keep looking at the study that we have about how we treat our neighbors and what we should do with them. And of course our neighbors is anybody really truly that we come in contact with, not just who we live next to. But today we're going to look at uh, about prayer, about praying for our neighbors, praying for our, our family, praying for people. And uh, we're going to look at how what God says to us about that. Let's go to the Lord in prayer first. Father, as we come to you now, Lord, pray that you just lift up your word, strengthen each one of us through it, help us to realize where we're at in our walk with you. Lord, help us to realize who our neighbors are, as we've already talked about for the last couple of weeks. And Lord, as we look at the word prayer today, help us to realize truly how important it is to you. Because Lord, all it is is communicating with you, talking to you. It'd be like talking to a family member or talking to our mate or something. Lord, it's something that we, we need to do. And uh, Lord, you, you tell us in a couple of places what we should look for and how we should do it. And we're going to look at those today. So we pray that you'll take this word now and apply it to each one of our lives. Help us to have a desire to draw closer to you and grow stronger and stronger in you each and every day. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Today, we're, as we take a look at the prayer, uh, the disciples one time asked Jesus, they didn't, you know, it's amazing. Uh, they didn't ask him, how to, ask him how to help them teach. They didn't ask him how to help them uh, do anything else other than one thing. In uh, two places in the Bible, it talks about it. And one we're going to look at today, if you want to go ahead and mark, turn to it, is Mark 11. They asked Jesus, teach us how to pray. And I believe the reason why they did that, because God laid it on the heart, because it's important. Uh, it's just like communicating, as I said a while ago, communicating with our family members, with our mates or whatever it is. We, you have to have a good line of communication. You have to have times where you sit down and you're able to talk to each other. And that's what Christ wants out of us. And so we're going to look at Mark 11, what he told the disciples. Mark 11, and uh, excuse me, Luke 11, I'm sorry, Luke 11. And we're going to start in the first verse of Luke 11. He says, Now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place when he had ceased praying that one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us how to pray as John also taught his disciples. And so the Lord said to him, whenever you pray, this, so this is, this is the sample that, that the Lord Jesus Christ himself gave them. He, was, he, he prayed to the Father all the time and they, they were one, but he still prayed to the Father all the time. So it was very important that he prayed to the Father. He says, when you pray, pray this, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, or holy is your name. And you notice the first thing he talks about is, is the relationship between us and who our, who, our, who our Father is in heaven. We need to have above everything else that we have a relationship with, no matter how important our, our relationship is with our mate, with our children, with the people we work with, no matter how important it is, the most important relationship we'll ever have is with our Father in heaven. So he says, holy be your name. In other words, Lord, you are the only one who is holy. He says, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is one of the things when we pray in our prayers, and we're going to look at several kinds of prayers today that, that's mentioned in, in uh, the book of Timothy. But when we pray, we should keep in mind that above everything else, God's will needs to be done. And it's going to be. We don't, we don't have to pray for it so that it happens. We don't have to do that because God's, God is God and He's going to make it happen anyway. But what we need to do when we pray is line ourselves up with what God really wants out of our life. And when we get to the point where we're praying in God's will, we can have a, any, anything we want to ask, ask done. Because when we get to where we're praying in His will, it's what He wants to start with. And so what He tells them here, first thing is pray to the Father who's in heaven that His name be holy and that His will be done here on the face of the earth. And then He says, give us this day, or it says, give us day by day our daily bread. In other words, there's some things that we're going to look at here in a little bit, but one of the things it says here is that we need to look about our daily substance. We, we need to realize that we need to ask God for it. He's going to supply it. He will supply it. But it's one of those things we need to thank Him for it every day, realizing here in the United States, we don't get to see many days where we're truly hungry. 
even even people who are having a struggling time right now. And I know there's some families out there who are, who really struggle. But it's not like in countries where, where they're having uh, so, so many disasters and everything going on that there's absolutely nothing to eat and people don't eat for four or five days. That's not what we face here. But we need to thank Him every day for what He does provide and ask Him to continue to provide it each and every day. So he says, give us our day, our, our daily bread. Even the, even the children of Israel, when they were in the wilderness, they were there for 40 years. God fed them every day. Every day he took care of them. And he told them that he would. And he did that. It wasn't what they always wanted. I mean, they got tired of quail and they got tired of whatever was out there that God gave them because it was all they had. But you know what? If they'd obeyed God to start with, they'd have been over and, and that trip would have been done in about two and a half to three weeks that took that 40 years. So we see all things come together and cause some problems in our lives, but we're supposed to ask the Lord each day to help feed us and take care of our daily needs. Then he says, and forgive us of our sins. That's one of the main things we need to do. God wants us to keep our accounts close. In other words, when we sin and we know we've sinned or, or we've done something we feel like uh, is against what God is happy with or maybe we've said something out of the way to our mate or to somebody we work with or whatever, God wants us to keep our accounts closed. He wants us to ask forgiveness of those things. That's what he means here by forgive us of our sins. And he says, and we also want you to forgive everyone who is indebted to us. In other words, not only us, but forgive the people who owe us. That's strange, isn't it? That we want to pray for the people who owe us and ask God to forgive them of that. We need to realize how important it is that we treat not only our family members, but our enemies well. Even though that doesn't sound right, it doesn't feel right. That's what God wants and that's the reason why he does this. <clears throat> so he says, give us our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone who has indebted us. In other words, we, we as Christians today need to be forgiving of what people have done to us, the things that they've done to cause hurt. Now, sometimes you may not be able to forget them, but you, we need to be able to forgive them. We need to be able to look God in the eye and look, look them in the eye and say, well, I've forgiven you. I haven't forgotten it, but I, I have made it a, a point in my life to turn it over to the Lord and let Him take care of it. So he says, as we also forgive those who are indebted to us and do not lead us into temptation. Every day we need help because you know what? The closer we're trying to live for the Lord and when we're praying like we should, we're going to be living closer to the Lord. The closer we try to live to him, the more Satan is going to be on our backs. The more he's going to try to cause things to happen in our mind and your life. And so he, that's the reason why he says here that we need to do that. Don't lead us in, don't allow Satan to lead us into temptation. Give us the strength each and day to stand up to what he's wanting to do. Because that's exactly what Satan is wanting to do, is lead us into temptation so we fall short of what God uh, uh, wanting us to be. And he says, but deliver us from the evil one, and that's Satan. And you know what? Here's the thing about Satan. He's very knowing. He knows a lot about us. And he knows every one of our weaknesses. And that's where he hits us. He doesn't hit us in our strong spots where we're real strong. And we don't, we don't even, it's not a temptation to us. He, excuse me, he wants to hit us where we're really tempted, where we can be tempted. And what we need to do is ask God to help protect us in those areas. We all know where a lot of them are. So ask God to help protect us. Now let's turn to, to the first Timothy. And let's look what uh, God has to say to us in the, in the book of Timothy. Because when he's talking to Timothy here in the second chapter, he's wanting... He's wanting to praise Timothy for what he's doing there uh, where he's teaching and preaching. But he's also wanting Timothy to realize there really needs to be strength each and every day and prayer for people and prayer for each and every one. And he says there's four kind of prayers and Timothy talks to us about these. Uh, Paul talks to Timothy about these as, as he's teaching them today. So in chapter 2 of 1 Timothy, he says, Therefore I exhort you, first of all, in other words, I urge you. Paul is saying, I want to urge you that each and every day that you pray to God, and there's four types of prayers that you can cover that we need to look at near every day of our life. He says, with all supplications. Now, supplication 
is uh, an urgent request for somebody. In other words, we're praying for somebody, maybe they've had a heart attack and they're unconscious, or maybe they, they're having cancer and they're, uh, or they're in a hospice house and they, they, don't, they don't have long to live. This is a really urgent prayer for somebody that's in that shape. So that's one kind of prayer that God wants us to pray. And every one of us has some of those. We, we, we know people, near about every person here knows somebody that's in that kind of shape. It could also be for somebody uh, who, who's uh, not, not wanting to know anything about, about Christ or become saved or want anything to do with it. There's people out there that, today that, hurt, that hate the word Jesus. They hate the word church. They don't want anything to do with it at all. So he says, I want you to make all supplications for these people. There's people out there who need us to pray this way for them. We all know people who need us to pray for them like that. Then he says the second thing, pray is for regular general prayers. And their prayers on behalf of people and friends and family, prayers on part of ourselves. It's just a general prayer that we need to do each and every day to cover each and everything that we need to talk to God about. And why wouldn't we want, if, if, if we... You know, to go to our boss man, we need to talk to him about something with a job, or you go to the part of your family and you need to talk to him something about that. Prayer is just a natural thing to do, but the people don't want to do it because it's talking to God and they, they think it's a waste of time. But God says it's not. It's not a waste of time. Matter of fact, God loves for us to pray to him. He wants us to talk to him. He wants us to spend time. We can learn a lot from God by reading and looking at the word of God. But we also learn so much by talking to him. Because listen, when we talk to him and we ask him things, we can, we can get answers. I've, I've seen times, especially in the word of God, where I had no idea what God was really wanting me to see out of that and say, God, would you show me? And if you will, if you'll ask him that, he will. So general prayers, it's for, for our leaders our, of our nation, for our president, uh, for our leaders here in Okeechobee. It's for leaders and people who are in charge, our pastors, our Sunday school teachers. We're supposed to be praying for all of them. General prayers about their well-being, about God using them, and about God watching over them and their families. Those are the general prayers. So you got supplications, then you got general prayers. Then the third thing you got is intercessory prayer. It's probably one of the most important ones of them although all of them are important. Intercessory prayers means you're play, praying for somebody who can't pray for their self or they won't pray for their self. Somebody, like I said a while ago, that's, that's uh, unconscious or uh, sick in the hospital or so weak they can't pray or so many things going on with them and, and, and things in their life and they, they just they, they, a lot of them who are unsaved, they, they don't want to be saved. But you know what? We've all got family members that probably don't care anything about being saved. I've got family members who don't really care about it. But you know what? They're the ones we need to be praying for. We need to, we need to pray that God will help change their mind. That's the reason why prayer is so, so important. They may not pray for it, but you can. You may have friends who don't want to talk about the Lord. You may have friends who don't want to talk about the, any parts of the Bible or they don't have any use for it. Pray for them. Pray for them that they will change their mind, that they will come to see why it's so important that they know about what God wants out of their lives. So that's uh, another one of the prayers. Then the third one is a prayer of giving thanks. We have so much here in America to give God's pray, God praise for. The first thing we need to praise Him for is our salvation. Thank Him that Christ came down and died on the cross just for us that he was willing to give his life and he was willing to give it before the foundations of the world were ever laid. That, I, that just blows my little old puny mind. It does. That God would love me enough that he would send his son down to die on the cross. Some six, 7,000 years before I was even born, God died for me. Christ died for me on the cross. And I need to praise him for that. We have so many things in our life. We and then uh, we was talking about the prayers that we need sometime when we need things. There's so many things that we need to praise God that we have nowadays. We're so blessed. We're so blessed in this nation, and we need to praise God each and every day for it. Then for for what He's done in our life as far as furnishing things and and supplying our needs and everything. Every day we need to thank Him for that. Let Him know how much we appreciate Him taking care of us. 
Now, He may not supply everything we want, but He supplies all of our needs. And we need to praise Him for that. So let's go back to the very first of this chapter. It says, Therefore I exhort you, first of all, on suppl for the, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of th things, giving of thanks be made to all men, for all men and to all men. He's, he's talking about each and every one of us praying. There's a lot of people who have a hard time praying. It's absolutely nothing but talking to God. Absolutely nothing but talking to God. Just like talking to a friend. Just like talking to a family member. Only thing is you're talking to God. And He wants you to. He wants to listen to what you've got to say. Even though He already knows what, what it's going to be. He wants to hear you say it. So he says, be made for all men, to all men and for all men, for kings and all those who are in authority. See, we're supposed to pray for our leaders every day. Even though we may not have voted for the man who's president of the United States right now, you may not have can even stand him. It doesn't matter. As a Christian, we're supposed to pray for him. Same thing with some of the people on our city or, or councils and uh, county commissioners or in place of power around and, and maybe, maybe even just your boss man sometime. God says we need to pray for each other. We need to pray for each other each and every day, especially those who are in authority. And pray that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reference. This is one thing Christ can really help us with. He can see to it that, that this happens. He, he, he can help us get to the point to where things are peaceable. You've seen people in turmoil and things going on, and it seemed like they didn't have a care in the world. One reason why is because God gives them the peace. That's one great thing that He can give all of us. No matter what's going on in our life, no matter how bad it is, how rough it is, we can always go to the Lord and ask for peace in our life, and He says He's willing to give that. So he says in verse 3, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. You see, God, God wants that. We're not bothering Him. We're not bothering Him. Uh, in, in Roman days when all the Greeks and the philosophers and everything were there, they, they didn't want to pray to their gods they had because they thought they didn't want to bother them. It was going to be a real bother if they tried to talk to one of their gods that they were serving at the time. But listen, the true and living God and Jesus... They want, they want us to talk to them. It is not a bother. It is a great deal. It's just like sitting down with a family member you had not seen in a while and having a good conversation or sitting down with your family at night around the table and having a good conversation. It's good. And that's what God wants out of us. For it says, This is good and acceptable in the sight of God uh, our Savior who desires that all men, first of all, to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's what He desires out of everybody. When Christ died on the cross, he died for everyone. And he desires all of them to come to the truth. It says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. That's the man Christ Jesus. Who gave himself as a ransom for all of us to be tested in due time for which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. This is, like I say, this is Paul talking to Timothy. He, Paul says, listen, this is what... Uh, and remember, God struck him down on the road to Damascus. He was, he was fixing to go into Jerusalem and then go into Damascus and have people arrested and everything for worshiping God. And God says, I'm going to use you. I'm going to get your attention. So he struck him down road on, on, on the road to Damascus and struck him down blind. And he asked him, he says, why are you doing this against me? I'm the true living God and you're out here persecuting me. You're out here trying to tell people who are believing in me that they need to be, and you were having some of them killed. And that's when Paul changed. So he says, for which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. So he says, I am speaking the truth in Christ and I'm not lying. I mean, Paul was, Paul was really uh, the type of person who was out trying to get the Christians killed because he was, he was a truly a devout Jew and believe, believe that the Jewish uh, word that they had for each and everybody was exactly what God wanted. He thought that Jesus was just some man that was coming, was trying to stir up some trouble and, and instead of him being the, the son of God. And so when God struck him down on the road to Damascus and got his attention, from that time on, Paul completely changed. And he changed from a man that was trying to get Christians thrown in jail to hear where he sees telling Timothy, we need to pray for everybody. 
That's the, that, that's, that's the change that Christ can do to each and every one of us. So it says, I'm speaking the truth in Christ and not lying. I'm a teacher of the Gentiles and in faith and in truth. Paul was teaching the word. He was wanting Timothy to understand that and he was wanting Timothy to understand how important prayer is. Let's pray. Father, thank you for prayer. It's nothing, uh, nothing elaborate, Lord. It doesn't have to be. It can be very, very simple. Just talk to God from our heart about the things going on. We need to praise Him, first of all, for our salvation. Praise Him for the Word that He give us, gives us that we can read each and every day. And Lord, we thank You for that. And Lord, I pray that You'll draw each one of us closer. Give us a deeper desire each day to talk to You. Give us a desire each day to pray for the people around us. Pray for our neighbor, whether we like him or not, whether we like her or not. Pray for our neighbor, especially for their salvation and drawing closer to you. And Lord, we'll give you the praise and honor and the glory because you're the only one worthy. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Thank you, folks. And y'all have a great morning.